success for me is never taking anything for granted because I know that at the end of the day, things I might be chasing don't matter as much as the things I already have. Let's be honest, what's stopping you really for you of being able to achieve the life that you want, earn the money that you want, have the impact that you want, and really just have the success that you want? That's what we dive into in this episode. Mary Shinano, you might have seen our previous interview that we've done. She's also known as the Paleo Chef. And in that episode, we talked about food, we talked the Paleo diet, we talked about how to have a diet to suit you, and it was a fantastic episode. But this episode, we go so much deeper. We go into it, how does somebody that literally before at the world's best level that's giving so much great value to so many people day in day out this is going to give you the answer for what it is that you need to be doing today to get to the success that you want so if you, number one if you haven't actually watched our first episode that we did together I highly suggest you do because Mary knocked it out of the absolute park where's your mic yeah it's on the inside, okay. It's isn't it? Yeah, that cool. We've stepped it up a level. We've stepped it up. <laughs> I was like, what's happening here? Who's he talking to? <laughs> okay, you're good, Mary. You're good. I, I got this. I got this. I've done this a couple of times before. Okay. Now, what I, I want to jump straight into this. You've got a really good BS detector. We were talking about this earlier before, yeah. but I feel like this is something, this is a skill that everybody should have. How do you help cultivate that into somebody? Or if you see this in somebody that they kind of get swayed either way um, and they're kind of going into maybe the crowds that they shouldn't be, sure. how do you help like bring that about? I don't, I actually don't know that I have a good answer for that. What makes somebody have a BS meter? Mm. I don't know, I guess it comes from experience and being taken for granted or being conned. Like having, I've gotten better at calling bullshit yeah because i've been tricked by bullshit yeah. before so it's really experience i think i think if if specific to the question about what if you see somebody being swayed into the wrong group yeah when you're when you find a new group of people and you feel yourself wanting to spend time with them ask yourself why mm. is it because i need to know these people for success is it because i want to network yeah is it because i feel like they're just better than me and the whole like you're the average of the five people you spend yeah. time with which i'm like you're part of that five yeah. so like make sure your shit's on lock too yeah. plus i don't ever want to be the sum of something that's kind of weird to yeah. me too yeah um so ask ask yourself why you're wanting to hang out with that crowd and make sure that the intentions are coming from a place of uh power and goodness versus a space a place of scarcity or desperation yeah so I'll speak from my experience. Say when I first met yourself and Jay and Craig, I was just like, oh my God, these people, it sounds a bit corny, but I was kind of like, feel my soul's cup. I was kind of like, I feel like this I was feels really good. That day. I don't know. <laughs> you did something right. I'm not too sure what it was, but you did something right. But it was really good. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like, I kind of feel like these are my people right now. Like, I feel like I'm, this is what's going, yeah. hence why I'm back here. Yeah. Um, and there's a difference between, um, like we're all, we're all, everyone that you mentioned, we're all doing stuff, mm -hmm. right? And we all elevate each other because we're all good at different things. And obviously we, we gain from being around that energy, but there's a difference between feeling good and feeling like your, your soul cup is being filled versus feeling like, oh, I need to be with these people because I want my cup filled. Yeah, Is totally, there a difference? totally, yeah. absolutely. One's being needy and one's, I think as well, you bring something to the table, which I think is really important. One feels like um, an exhale for me. Hmm. Like there's, like my friends definitely inspire me, but when I'm with them, I feel, mm. and then we can get really passionate about things. Versus there's some environments where I go into it and there's no moment of exhale. It's just right into like the high vibration, go, 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 go. And yeah. those will not be my, like my people, people. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I feel when I hang out with anyone of you guys is that I know we're going to have like high intensity, great conversations, but the first check in, the first hug is whew, yeah. I'm home. Yeah. Okay. I think that's really important. Now we don't speak um, a lot about business. And I think that's great as well because you know when you kind of get with people and they just want to talk yeah. numbers and business, and it's like God, I'm trying to get away from that yeah. today. Like yeah. that's not life. <laughs> yeah. Life is beyond those borders yeah. right now. 
Let's actually talk about business right now. That's the, <laughs> you're fantastic with it. We never talk about business, but... <laughs> Let's do it the camera's on. <laughs> so when it comes to growing fat, fat, you've got multiple different things to so there's context for the conversation. There's multiple different plates that you're spinning very well, which is what I said before. When it comes to say growing um, <laughs> fat fudge specifically, because you made a comment before about somebody um, that wanted to doing go after your audience and you're like, there's more than enough people to help, which I think is so true. How do you see the principles of the way you want to grow your businesses and what it is that you do? I want to grow roots before I grow up. Mm. So, uh, I'm not one to jump on a trend. Not that there's anything wrong with jumping on a trend, uh, but I constantly think about the long game. Yeah. So, my principles are, is what I'm building going to still be relevant 10 years from now? All the way down to like the way I package and design things. Yeah. So I like it to look timeless. Um, I like to really take care of my existing customer base yep. because if they're always there and they're rooted, no matter what happens, if someone's going to come after my business, yep. they're the ones that are going to keep it going, not me jumping on the next trend. So building the roots, there's a, a quote, which I'm going to butcher now, mm. about um, the tree with the roots that are deep doesn't fear the wind. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's far more elegant. I no, you could write it. That's good. <laughs> um, so I really, I really do think about that. But I think about that in my, my, my dynamics with my friends and relationships. So those are one of the principles is making sure that I'm not jumping on a trend and that what I'm doing is something that's really going to be sustainable and it's something that like, truly, really does help somebody else. Yeah. Um, like with Fat Fudge, it's really cool the the celebrities and the athletes that use it. Yeah. But I'm I'm more impressed and humbled by the people with medical conditions that are using yeah. it to fuel their healing. Yeah. And I don't make any claims with Fat Fudge. I create the product. I tell you what the ingredients are, and then I let everyone else tell me how they use it. Yeah. And again, it's really dope when so and so name drop name drop uses it. But it brings me to tears the message that I get from people that are struggling to get healthy or going through really serious treatments mm -hmm. and that's the only product that keeps them maintaining weight or having the strength mm -hmm. to fight and that that's what makes me feel really good um, and the same thing translates over to like day-to-day -day conversations like having a stranger walk by me and making sure that I'm so present that I can make eye contact yeah. with that stranger say hi compliment their shoes and knowing that 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 little interaction will make their day, maybe pay that yeah. forward. That's like the, the roots. It's like the essence of what I want to be. It's something that's been going through my head a lot is like the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And that's consistently what I see with yourself. It's that, can Thanks. you know, it really is that you're bringing to the table what you do on the macro and the micro. Do you know what I mean? The little things on just the way you might have a conversation with me, the way you interact. We were talking about your customer service and people like, this is Mary, like, so, yeah, it's me. Like, uh, I'm here to help you. Like, you're doing yeah. what you actually preach yeah. as well. Now, when it comes to Fat Fudge, where do you want to take that? What's the dream come true experience you want? I, I want to, for as long as possible, be able to display the story of how it was built. I know one day that will get, not killed, but you know, put aside because it'll become a bigger brand from my lips <laughs> to God's ears. Um, but I want to be able to continue to share the story of how it started for as long as possible because I want people to know that you can take an idea from idea stage to fruition and do it yourself and do it via sales. And then as it scales, I mean, I, I want I want it to, to be... I don't know. Is Power Bar a household name? Is Five Hour Energy a household name? I don't know. Not what in the right Australia. Word is. Power Bar people would know, but it's probably dying off now. Okay, I I want it to be something that people recognize. Like yeah. lately, I've been having more and more people talk about Fat Fudge without knowing it's my product. Oh wow! And then being like, oh yeah, I've heard of Fat Fudge. What do you think? Before I tell <laughs> it's mine. Like, <laughs> and that's really cool to know the brand is standing out on its own. Um, and then I would like to sell it. I want to sell it and move on to another project, but I don't think that's like at least five years out. What's the ultimate project you want to go to? All of them. I yeah. want to do as many things as I can, I possibly can. Um, there's like fun projects. Like I, I want to have a successful CPG 
company, which mm-hmm. would hopefully be Fat Buds. And then I want to move into like, I really want to have my own scotch line one day. I mm-hmm. want to have my own fanny pack line one day. So those are all the fun things, but I want all that fun to fuel into women's empowerment, into mm-hmm. domestic violence, into at-risk youth, because those are all other things that have affected me in some way. So uh, as long as this is fun and it can bring in the finances to help with this, I think that would make me feel like I have a really well-rounded life and like a sense of, I feel like sense of purpose is so cliche and played out, but just like a a way to show appreciation for this one life that I have mm. and the good life that I've had. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't feel like I owe it, yeah. but I also kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, this is really good. I'm totally happy for this to be on camera and recorded and what we were saying before, but I was saying that I've just not had a lot of fun recently. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. was like, I'm just not having fun. And I said to Lauren, it was a few weeks ago, I'm like, I'm just not having fun. We were sitting down after dinner, chilled out, the girls were in bed, and I was like, I need it. In- I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> it's good that you have that recognition, though, because there's a lot of people that they think the hustle has to be the fun, and they glorify the hustle. Totally. They glorify the struggle. And it is hard. It's supposed to be hard. Yeah. But you have to have fun, too. Like, yeah. You don't... You're not less of an entrepreneur no. if you're having fun. No, yeah, totally. <laughs> and I feel like it's the other way because if you kind of like, if you don't have that side to it, you're going to burn out eventually. Yeah. You're just going to become numb. You're going to become boring. Yeah. People aren't going to want to hang around you. And I mean real fun. I'm not talking about like, I have fun. I wake up and I write in my journal the things I'm grat- grat- yeah. grateful about. Yes. And I go out and I breathe. I mean, go have unplanned fun that isn't something you read in a book or like, saw in a tweet today like just go out and be human what's fun for mary well you guys can't see it but there's a question of you <laughs> i'm gonna take some b-roll so you can um, i don't know like when i when i have a day where i purposely try not to plan my day i do get up and i go for a run on the beach and then i will walk over to the bar and take a couple shots of tequila and then wander down into santa monica and then like find a house party where the doors open and just walk in and pretend like I'm part of the party and then I'll make some friends and then they'll be going on like a last minute trip to San Diego or Vegas and like I'll just go with some strangers and like have some adventure and then that will turn into like let's go camping and like it's not planned it's very spontaneous and that to me is a lot of fun for an unplanned day and then planned fun is usually something active I I would like to do more travel adventures um, which I hope to prioritize in the next year. I've, I've been very focused on, on Fat Fudge and mm. the other things, so it hasn't allowed me that. So in those ways, I feel like I'm cheating myself. Yeah. But I don't know. Fun is just honestly not thinking about work sometimes. Yeah. It's as simple as Getting that. Getting away from it. Yeah. I was, at, I was at my local bar just last week, and uh, I couldn't tell if the person next to me was familiar with my work or not, only because sat down, said hi, hey, and I'm talking to my bartender friend and watching a basketball game. And then they ask him what he wants to eat. And he like leans over and says like, oh, you know, I'm trying to do that keto thing, this. And I was like, oh. I didn't know where is he is. I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk about any of that right now. <laughs> and he leans over and he's like, have you heard of like this paleo keto thing? And I'm like, Oh yeah, that like that like high fat thing. He's like, yeah, are you familiar with it? I'm like, mm. and I point at my drink. I'm like, eh, and like I didn't even want to get into it. I didn't talk about what I did. Like even though it would be a great opportunity, or like I don't know what he's trying to get to, but I was like, this is the last thing I want to talk about right yeah. now. I'm at the bar drinking my tequila. So as much as I love what I do, there are times where that's not what I want to talk about. So I try to create <laughs> opportunities. Like I think that. a healthy disconnect is a great way to go. Yeah, I think I've definitely learned that the hard way as well. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I'm out and trying to just have one of those days, people ask me what I do, and I'm like, I'm just really figuring out life right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice way to <laughs> see you later. Okay, I, so you've had a tremendous amount of success, and I know there's exponential amounts more to come your way. You know a lot of people that a lot of people would deem successful. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I want to go there. How do you define success for yourself? Okay. Knowing and seeing behind the scenes what others don't. Sure. Um, 
Success for me is never taking anything for granted because I know that at the end of the day, things I might be chasing don't matter as much as the things I already have. Hmm. So as long as I'm happy, I don't feel like I failed at anything. Um, and as long as I have no regrets, because I'm, I'm the first person to make that mistake, to say I love you, to put myself out there, any of those mm. things, because I would rather know that I at least yeah. showed up yeah. for whatever it is. Um, so yeah, for me, is, is not taking anything for granted is my idea of success. And from that state of mind, I find it easier to make business decisions. Because mm. I'm coming from a place of like, I already act as though I, as I have fuck you money. Yeah. I don't wait to have money or have status to make the delineation between the things I do and say. And so starting from that place allows me to have more of like the traditional success on paper. Yeah. Um, and just constantly calling, as long as I'm always calling my, myself yeah. bullshit, yeah. I feel like I'll be successful. How do you help cultivate that self-awareness? Because that's one of your best skill sets. It comes from insecurity. Yeah. Like <laughs> it started from a place of feeling, feeling less than, but knowing that you're better than feeling yeah. less than. Um, being punched in the gut constantly, but knowing that I don't deserve to be punched in the gut. Um, I'm really heady, mm. and I think people could stand to, to think more, mm. be more thoughtful about things. Um, taking everything you hear with a grain of salt, like whoever whoever's book is out that's really fucking popular, and yeah, this is all the information I have, take all of that with a grain of salt. Yes. Know that there's a reality and there's a marketing to it. Yep and take the pieces of it and then make it your own. Don't just regurgitate word for word what you read because that's not gonna work for you the way mm. it worked for that person. Mm. Um, I, don't know, I think it's a, it's a process to cultivate that, I think, for the most part. But for me, it started from a place of massive insecurity, which I still carry all the time. Yeah. Yeah, How I bought taquitos the other day at Erewhon and I was crying and like called my attorney <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I need a pep talk. <laughs> I don't feel likable. <laughs> He's like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. I bought taquitos and I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think moments like that are really important to have self-awareness. When you feel like crap, feel like crap. Yeah. Embrace emotion. Yeah. Like the optimist is part of my branding. Yeah. But I, I say this and I mean it. Without my negativity, I wouldn't be such an optimist. Yeah. Do you feel like that's embracing the, like the yin with the yang like you really do have to have darkness to have lightness and all the kind of polarities that we do have yes yes i think the pathological optimism is it's pretty yeah makes for a really pretty post but it's not real it's dangerous to whoever's seeing it and it's dangerous to that person like yeah. i don't feel like you're getting to like to know yourself the way you need to yeah and if you don't get to know yourself the way you need to you're not gonna be able to do the really good work mm. that you need to do, that mm. you say you wanna do. So like, if you feel like crap, feel like crap. And if you're worried about spinning out, getting lost into it, maybe reach out to some people in your life and, and let them know like, hey, I need you to be my beacon yep. in case when I spin out, yep. it's too far. So I have people in my life like that. So when I'm feeling like crap, if I feel like it's going too far, I just throw out a white flag. Yep. And then they're here with cookies. and. Yep. Like, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah, okay, I think that's really important. I, I think that's definitely something that myself and everyone should really put into play is one, having the connection of those people, that, but knowing to throw that white flag as well. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to say it's a male thing, maybe it's just me being stupid. I don't throw that white flag enough. Took me a long time to get there. A really long time to get there. Maybe it's my testosterone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... My friend pointed this out once. She's like, Mary, it's very obvious you're an island of one. So like I've been single my entire adult life. I've been the one that all my friends go to. I'm very proud of like being self-sufficient. Yes. So the idea of reaching out, it's it's not hard because I'm ashamed. It's hard because like I got this. I've always gotten this. I've always taken care of myself. And uh and then there are times when I've tried to throw the white flag and it hasn't been received well mm. and then I like retract mm. and I'm like, Okay, now I feel not important. Yep. Um so it, again, took a sense of being vulnerable and being okay with showing up and getting kicked in the nads as a, re as a result of it. Yes. So it's, um, you have to put yourself out there and then if, if that person you want to throw your flag to doesn't respond, it's okay. You just pivot and throw the flag somewhere else. Yep. And it's going to take trial and error until you f find those people. Uh, 
wait, so when you don't throw the white flag, is it because you don't want people to know you need help? Or is it the same where I think we're like, no, I got this. Both. Why do you not want people to think you need help? Because I'm probably trying to say, like, I don't need that. Do you know what I mean? I'm good enough by myself. I can handle this by myself sure. and not have to, like, take the hit on my ego. But of course, you understand that that's misleading to another entrepreneur totally. who might be struggling and thinking, 100%. like, 100%. he has it together, so I have to have it together. Totally. And a big part of why I want to do this and yeah. really put it out there, do you know what I mean? Like, entrepreneurship, it's not easy. It has its ups and downs. And like, just like the fun thing as well. I was like, you know, I haven't had enough fucking fun for a long time. Like I'm doing stuff the wrong way right now. Yeah. I don't need to go there. Now, especially like when you say an island of one, growing up as an only child, it was always me do everything. Mm-hmm. Now coming into like a CEO position, that's a really shitty thing yes. to do because it's I can't do it all. Worst skill set ever. <laughs> Thank you for saying <laughs> People call in and I'm like, they, can I speak? Hi, it's Mary. Can I speak to the marketing department? Yeah, sure. Hold on. <laughs> Hi, it's Mary. Can we speak to customer service? Yeah, sure. Hold on. <laughs> Hi, it's Mary. <laughs> like, it's awful. That's not how a business should be run. Too many hats. Too many hats. <laughs> how do you, or how are you breaking through that? <laughs> Tentatively. <laughs> um... I actually think the more time I carve out to just have fun and not think about my business, the Mm. more clarity I have Mm, on the things that I can break through and start to get help with. So it's like in the last six weeks, I've taken more time of doing fuck all than I have in a really long time. And in those moments of fuck all, I've been like, okay, I need a COO. Yep. I need to start looking into funding. Yeah. I need to get this person helping this way. That's okay. that's such good advice for so many people because I know I'll definitely be the person, this is something I've really got to break out of, is I'll be in that position of, oh no, don't take any time off. Or I've got a spare hour. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Let's go do this task now. Yeah. Like Even this morning, I woke up at six. I've gone so much done this morning. I did all of my to-dos for today before coming here. I was, like, I was like, I, I would love a cookie. <laughs> I love a cookie. Yeah, I would love a cookie. But then I said to myself, I was like, oh, after I see Mary and go and train, sweet, I'll probably have another three or four hours where I should do it, get some more work done. I can no, do tomorrow. do no. nothing. I know. I said to myself, I'm not meditate, at the door. not write in your journal, do nothing. I think I posted something. So I, 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 on accident, took like a week off from posting anything, yeah. um, which may not seem like much to people, but when you run an online business yeah. and social platform, that is a long time. And I think it's the longest I haven't posted something since I started my Instagram. Yeah. And it was really quite nice. But I mean, I got a lot of really nice messages like, are you okay? Is everything okay? And it wasn't intentional, but then when I decided to do a little check-in, um, I posted that quote from Maya Angelou about how everybody go read it because again more eloquent than I'm going to say but it's about how everybody needs a day away from friends family responsibilities um, where no solutions are being Mm. sought out so that's Mm. like not me sitting or meditating what do I need to do with my business Mm. and if your ego allows you you'll be able to see that not only can all these problems live without you one day but they probably could live without you infinitely Yeah. and I always so a lot of people start their day with like empowering phrases like i'm amazing i start the day with like mary I just want you to know you're a piece of fucking shit <laughs> and you don't actually matter and you're not that special the only difference between you and someone else is that you're doing stuff so continue to do stuff mm. to get more people to do stuff but you're not that special yes uh and I, I enjoyed that time off and I really enjoyed that that quote like, yeah, my ego allows me to know that if I left the planet today, yeah. life would go on yeah. and having that freedom from these self-imposed responsibilities allow me to choose what I want to be responsible for and what I can give to somebody else. Very empowering and I love that and I'm vibing on that so much because it, it was funny not that long ago when I gave stuff off to team members and I was like, oh, okay, like you can join. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did a better job and yeah. I'm like oh <laughs> nuts <laughs> Chris you're not that good yeah. this is a good thing yeah. but yeah totally and so I think as well like context for the viewer I think it, depending on which level you're at like if you're at ground zero and you're starting you're going to wear all the different yes, hats 100%. you do all of it it's going to be hard do you mean it's going to be hard for a it. while too like I like I was I was hand packing my product myself I mean, I've still got that photo yes, yeah, yeah. 
And and I think sometimes people start ground zero and think like I think they read a book and they want to outsource everything. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, no, that's not how you build roots. Mm. We need to build roots. It's gonna suck. You're gonna do everything. You're gonna do everything for a while. You're gonna risk it all. Yeah. But you have to go into it loving that you're gonna risk it all. Yeah. Like romance the fuck out of that risk. Yeah. And it will. I will love you back most of the time. But also know when to walk away. <laughs> no, 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 but it's, it's just like the quote that you said. Um, we had a few messages. It was like a couple of weeks ago. Passion isn't what you do; it's what you bring, bring to everything that you do. And I was like, "Oh my god, yeah. that was a life changer." Because for, for, for me, I would I would get asked a lot, um, even when I was still in corporate America, like, "Oh, you're so passionate. You must follow your passion, follow your dreams." I'm like, "That is the most misguided bullshit I've ever heard." Yeah. Passion is not what I do, it's what I bring to everything that I do. And by virtue of that, I end up finding the actual thing I want to continue doing. Yeah. So like, you don't just show up to life like, nah, I'm not passionate about this. Yeah. Cause what, what, what did you say? Everything, what you do here is what you do everywhere. What's what that what you do, uh, what is <laughs> what you do one thing is what you do everything. Yes, yes. So that's, that's important to me is like show up with enthusiasm. Yes. I mean, most people don't even show up at all. Yeah. They half show up. Very half assed. No. Okay. What's the one thing that you want the listener, the viewer to do today? This, the context is, is success or what is the context? The context is whatever you want it to be, Mary. Well, I think it's the same thing that I, I usually say, like, you're going to die one day. <laughs> and if mortality isn't your greatest muse, I really don't know. Yeah. what else I could say to you like it's be really mindful of the time that you have for yourself and be mindful of the finite time of everybody around you yep. and use that that morose yep. thinking for absolute inspiration um, I think it's a great filter it is it really really is a great filter I always like for visual people I always like to think of like this is what's going on in my head and then I let it drop down and I let my heart filter what actually matters mm. and doesn't matter yeah. and then whatever stays allows me to make decisions moving forward yeah Mary you are one of the greatest human beings I know I'm so thankful okay, to have you as a friend <laughs> <It's> okay <laughs> you can pay me in cookies now for you right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the links below to make sure that you can get a part of everything that Mary is doing and to get yourself fat fudge as well because I've just got the lowdown that there's some new flavors coming out that are going to be <laughs> incredible. If I ever make it to them, I keep eating my own samples and not getting to it's them. It's that good. It's that good. Mary might not let us have any, but I'll make sure that you can go to the links below and make sure you can get fat fudge sent straight to, and also to make sure you can see everything that Mary's doing as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. You're a rock star. This is where I want to make sure that you get the most out of being here and I want to hear from you. So if you've enjoyed this episode, click like and make sure I can send you the new episodes each and every week. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, I really want to make sure that I'm giving you exactly what you need. So comment below. I want to know what you're going to take away from this episode. And the best conversations after every episode always happen in the Breaking Success. Tribe. I'll pop a link below for you to join the free group so you get access to the guides, the live streams. I'm in there answering your questions personally each and every day, plus you get all the episodes as well. So thank you so much for being here and joining us. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.